Hello again. Um, I plan on doing a few uh, blogs on some work that I'm trying to do to be able to bring up different environments very quickly uh, with Fusion Middleware. And uh, one of the things I've been playing with is using VirtualBox and uh, building out uh, different instances of VirtualBox to build up a, uh, a fairly extensive environment very quickly uh, and deal with various uh, tiers. Uh, it enables me to do that, uh, but I do require a server that has quite a bit of memory, a little bit of horsepower, but it allows it to be very flexible. So just pictorially, what I'm trying to accomplish here is uh, to get an environment where I can build up various uh, areas like Web Center, uh, have an enterprise service bus, and a uh, SOA suite, some kind of the uh, operational tiers, and as well as the database tier. Uh, one of the things I want to be able to do is bring up these VMs and not have to worry about the DHCP and IP addresses of each of the machines and uh, DNS and all that. So what I wanted to do is build these VMs and utilize one of the new features of VirtualBox that allows you uh, within, let me uh, bring up an actual VirtualBox instance, um, uh, to bring up within a VirtualBox instance you can set the network configuration even though it's set to NAT you can set up uh, port forwarding so that a particular port uh, appears on your uh, your server as if it's a localhost port. So what this actually looks like is uh, this is the instance that I have here of this SOA suite environment. And because I've set up this port mapping for the various uh, managed servers within this virtual machine, I map those onto my host VM to be equivalent ports. And then from my VM host point of view, I have various uh, environments I can use to get into these systems and um, connect to the various uh, managed servers. And it all looks like it's running on the virtual host machine. So this is working pretty well. I've got a few of these environments set up now and I'm playing with them to see how well they work. But uh, another thing I want to be able to do is not only plug and play these different virtual machines into the areas and the tiers that I want, but each of these virtual machines I want to be able to reuse uh, and build very quickly. And what I have along those lines is how the actual machine is built. And if I bring up the uh, virtual machine console and builder. Uh, for example, the machine that I have running right now, this is SOA environment that is uh, for uh, for uh, patch, set patch set 4. It's kind of confusing. It's 1.1.5 patch set 4. has three disks. Uh, the first one being the actual operating system. And I'm using JOS, just, a, just enough operating system. So it's very small and it's the 32-bit version and uh, I have a dynamic disk so it says 20 gig here but the actual disk is quite small and this is something that I can use just to get the system up and running. Then I have another disk that has the SOA install and this includes all the SOA suite, uh, BAM, BPM as well as OSB and then uh, in another disk that deals with the user projects. So this is where my domain has been built off and all of these are dynamic and fairly small individually and it allows me to build up uh, new machines very, very quickly and uh, build specific machines with different user projects, different domains, without having to redistribute the uh, base install or the operating system. So I hope to set up a repository on Retriever for several of these. Uh, just bring that up as for background because I, I ran into a technical issue when I was running this SOA environment that I've uh, gotten through. And I want to just share that with how I got around this uh, with VMs and uh, port mappings. So now that you have a little bit of background here, here's uh, kind of showing you what is going on and, and what kind of uh, problems that I'm facing. So I'll bring up uh, bring up my, my Firefox here. Uh, just so you can see, I've got some links set up for the different tiers uh, 
And any machine that I go to, for example, the SOATIR Webology console, you can see down at the bottom it, it is pointing to a 3701 console, which is on localhost. This is actually going, being forwarded to my virtual box, virtual machine that is uh, running on this host. In the servers, I have the various uh, managed servers, each running on a particular port. And this is running quite well. Uh, one thing I did uh, need to do is now use my JDeveloper to uh, deploy an application. And this is where I started to see a problem. And I'll explain exactly what was going on. So in my JDeveloper, um, I can set up specifically app servers. Let's create a new application server and call this one localhost. WebLogic welcome one. And then here I use the localhost even though it's a VM and I just point it to the SOA tier. And it's the uh, SOA domain is the name. And then if I test this connection it uh, port forwards to the VM and it works great. So that looks, that looks pretty good. But then I started running into problem when I actually deploy something. I'll show you what I mean. When I actually do the uh, deploy of a specifically of a SOA type project, um, I was receiving an error when it was actually trying to look up the servers. So I can explain a little bit about what's going on here while it's uh, going to timeout. What happens is when you're starting to deploy, this is uh, going out to the administrative administrative server that you've specified in the app server specifications, and it's asking the admin server what SOA servers exist, and the admin server is passing back the uh, URL for the SOA servers. But during that, uh, what is going on is it actually passes back the IP address of the virtual box or what the virtual box thinks his IP address is which whenever you set up NAT is by default the 10.0.2.15 address. Well, that's a problem because uh, obviously that address doesn't uh, isn't found by my J developer which is running on my virtual host. So a few things that I tried while this is trying here I'll show you a couple things I tried to do to overcome this. One is I went into the actual uh, server, managed server settings in the protocols, HTTP protocols, and I set the front-end host to be localhost and the correct port, also the uh, remote address override. And this actually was working for Service Bus just by making these changes. Uh, any type of connections I was doing to Service Bus, uh, this, this fixed it, but for not for the SOA suite. When I did this, uh, it still considered um, the default channel to be the IP address of the virtual machine, which is causing problems. Uh, and that default address actually comes from the configuration, uh, the general configuration right here. This listen address is the default channel. And when it's left blank, uh, it listens to all the IP addresses, all of the uh, network addresses on the machine, which is great. Uh, but in this particular case, with the J developer, when uh, the admin server returns the list of SOA servers, it doesn't just return what the front end host says it should. It uh, actually returns the IP address of the server. So, and you'll see that once this thing times out here. So here returned, and you can see that from the error message that it's actually having a problem connecting to uh, 10.0.2.15. So the admin server is giving back this address, uh, whether that's right or wrong, uh, I'm not sure. But uh, the way to kind of get around this is to uh, go in and if we go back to the WebLogic console for this particular server, for SOA server, uh, I can set the local host as the address that it listens to uh, and restart the server. Now what, what happens though is now this listens to localhost only. So I've, I've tied it specifically to uh, 127.0.0.1 and this will fix the issue that I have with BPM or with the uh, J developer in the deployment but will cause some other problems which I'll show you right after I uh, go ahead and restart this uh, server server. So we'll shut that down and restart it. And 
as soon as this comes back up, then we'll be able to see uh, that it's only listening to localhost. And the problem comes in with the way that the uh, virtual box does the port mapping. So when I've set this network adapter port forwarding here for the SOA environment, it is listening, you would think, it would forward this to all the uh, all the devices on the system, but what it really needs here is to be pointed directly to localhost. So you would think this would work, uh, that I could spe specify that on my host system uh, this port would automatically forward to localhost on 3801 and therefore the uh, server would take over and pick up the correct um, the correct address. But this actually breaks virtual boxes port forwarding. Uh, when I put this in, I actually get no listening addresses on the host IP. I've tried also setting this to uh, 127001 without any success. Uh, interestingly enough, if I, if I don't use the virtual boxes forwarding, if I delete this line, and I just use SSH tunneling for 8001 and just do a, a, a dash capital L, then everything works fine. So it really has to do with how this is defined within the virtual box. So I, I need to keep this uh, generic like this, and yet uh, I still need to also have my server definition in here to be pointing specifically to localhost. And so as this starts up, uh, let me just show you what I end up doing to fix this is to go into protocols and set up yet another channel uh, and inside this channel I set one up that will listen to the uh, specifically to this network card and I can go ahead and uh, set up this uh, to be the same and now what this forces it to do is not only listen to localhost, uh, but also listen to the virtual machine's um, network address. So just like before, before I had this entry in the channels and the configuration for the general configuration with this empty, it was listening to all network channels. And so it was listening to localhost as well as the uh, 10.0.2.15. When I force the default channel to be localhost. Uh, that will help with my J developer, but it actually breaks some other things, so that's why I need to go in and, and set up this channel. So now it's actually from a server, from a SOA server point of view, it's exactly the same. It's listening to two different addresses of the same port, but because I've s basically swapped and I've made the default channel to be localhost, and the secondary channel uh, to be 10.0.2.15. When I bring up JDeveloper and do the uh, deployment, it will all work correctly because the admin server will return the solo server's address as localhost uh, 3801, and my JDeveloper will then find that through the port forwarding that I've set up for the virtual box configuration. So as soon as this comes back up and is running, then we'll be able to uh, take a look at the JDeveloper deploy. So now the server is running, and I can bring JDeveloper back up and just kind of refresh this, um, have a look up. And now it's actually giving me a different error. So I uh, just needed to go back and realize that uh, the change that I had made was while the server was booting, so I had to make that change and make sure it was active and listening on that port. So now I go back to the uh, localhost configuration. It does a lookup on the servers, and it does find uh, the localhost now. So you can see it's actually pointing to the correct URL and has returned localhost because that is the default channel now and it's there for me to go ahead and do the deploy and, and all that works correctly. So that's just a way of setting things up so that the virtual box can still use NAT 
use port forwarding and yet have the servers listening to the correct ports and the network addresses so that the remote development and JDeveloper still works. So that's it for today.